So yeah, absolutely. So a little bit about me and what inspired this title. Um, I have been in the network marketing direct sales industry uh, for a good little while, you know, myself. And one thing I have noticed, regardless of what company someone is in, you know, they're always looking for new ways to attract people to their offer. You know, um, mm -hmm. in direct sales, network marketing, you always want to generate that volume in your business to where you're producing sales or you're recruiting other business partners, you know, into your offer. So I decided to on the title of the you know methods of attraction, because that's what we do in the industry. We attract people to our offers. Now, anyone who's on um, this blog right now watching, if you have ever been in the network marketing industry at all, you know, maybe you were like me where when you first got started, the only methods of attraction that you heard about in your business was creating a list of names, you know, calling those list of names. You know, most of the time they say do a list of 100 to 200 names, you know, call call that list of names and then, you know, get them um, interested, pick their interest into your company. But what I found out to be a struggle for most network marketers is what happens after your list runs out, you know, so that, that's one of the biggest struggles I see for most network marketers is once their initial list, their warm market, people you know, once that runs out, how do you continue to attract more people into your okay. company? Awesome. So that's what sparked, you know, sparked the title. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, great. And um, awesome, awesome. So um, what are the, what, what niche, are you are you engaged in in your network marketing business is it a specific industry is it a specific niche um who is it that you are uh, attracting what's the product or service tell me a little bit about you know your the offer gotcha so my primary business i'm in the travel industry so the travel okay. niche so you know um reason why me personally i decided to join the travel industry it's because whenever I ask anybody if time and money were no issue, what would you like to do? Most folks say travel. <laughs> All right. Matter of fact, you know, my wife and I, we're, we're going to Orlando, Florida tomorrow. You know, we're taking a okay. trip. Um, about five people I talked to today were talking about how they want to go on vacation somewhere, take a cruise or something. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I personally partnered with my company, which is in the travel industry. So that way I can take okay ownership of that eight trillion dollar a year industry awesome yeah awesome awesome and so um this is a network marketing company correct okay correct. and so in your company um how does a person uh build income and well i get no let's go back to the title your title is um online methods of attraction so more importantly um, what are the you were mentioning early on at the beginning of your discussion that there were traditional ways right. of attracting and then now you're introducing people to online methods. So give me some give us some um, idea of the differences between the two methods. All right. So the biggest difference. So what's the offline method. Now, I want to throw this out here to anybody that's in network marketing watching right now. I am not telling you to stop doing the traditional methods, okay? Network marketing is still a people company, and you want to get face-to-face -face with people and build relationships. I totally get that, okay? So I'm not telling you to stop those methods. I'm just saying it's best to combine the offline with the online methods. And here's why. If Anyone on this blab ever notice when someone first gets started in a network marketing company, if you are on social media, the first thing a new person would do is go on social media and I call it verbal vomit on all your friends. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and what I mean by verbal vomit is you go post whatever your company's name is all over your Facebook page, all over your Instagram, and you start telling people to join my company, join my company, join my company. So guess what happens? Your friends start to ignore you, <laughs> okay? Because they don't want to come to your Facebook page and every time they see you, all you're doing is talking about your company. So what I've learned from a lot of the six-figure earners in the industry 
is called attraction marketing, where you want to become the hunted instead of the hunter. So with attraction marketing, you're giving people value every single day. So say, for instance, you are in the weight loss industry. You may want to write a, a blog post or make a post on your Facebook page about why is it so important to lose weight? You know, give people five tips on how to lose weight. You know, naturally what's going to happen is people are going to ask you, what are you doing? You know, how did you all of a sudden become the expert in this field? And then naturally you can introduce them to your product or service after that. You know, so you want to make sure you are a product of the product. So regardless of what company you're in, you always want to give people value, you know, build that what I call like, know and trust. People are always going to do business with people they like, know and trust. So if you give them value every single day and you're not just spamming them on your Facebook page or Instagram, then they will naturally gravitate towards you without you having to go hunt them down and call Uncle Bob every single day to watch right. your presentation. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Awesome. And so with the online methods, what are the online methods that you have found to be most uh, productive? What's your process in, in attracting people now online? So, this good question. My process now is every day I try to make some type of value video. So since, okay. I'm in the tra since I'm in the travel industry, you know, I will make a video about why I like to travel, the different places that I have traveled to. You know, um, when I go, like, for instance, when I go to Orlando this week, I'm going to take tons and tons of pictures of me and my family enjoying travel. So and I'm going to post those pictures just saying, hey, we like to travel. Here's what we went to. This is what we experienced. So it's lots of videos giving value about travel, lots of pictures giving the value. Um, I also have a blog. I have my own personal blog now where I brand myself. Awesome. So when you, when you go to my blog, you're not necessarily going to see my travel company. You're going to see things about me, you know, mm -hmm. what I like to do personally and how I'm helping people, you know, with my company. So it's all about branding myself and getting people to like, know, and trust me. So they naturally say, well, Zach, what do you do? You know, what company are you with? What's the, the main, um, and I'm going to come back to that because I didn't really complete that. Um, you shared with me two parts of your process. One was, um, one was a video and the other is blogging. So mm -hmm. what's the main, um, the main value offer when you do reach a person? Um, they obviously have to have an interest in travel because you're in the travel industry. And right. so what's the main value proposition for them uh, taking your offer? What is the offer? What's the value of the offer? So what the happens value, in your in your business? Got you. So in my business, the value is saving money on your travel. OK, okay. So if you're, if you're going to travel anyway, why not shop at wholesale instead of retail? And then you will mm -hmm. also have the opportunity to become your own travel agent and have your own travel franchise so you can franchise yourself out and create leverage for yourself. So with that being said, you can have, here's the thing, in most traditional franchises like McDonald's, they make money because they have multiple outlets, not just one outlet. So in our travel company, you could become a travel agent, be the actual owner of your travel company, have the ability to help other people franchise themselves into their own travel company as well. So. Now you're going to save money on travel, but also when you help other people save money on their travel and get into the travel industry as well, you will start to collect residuals in income based on that. Huh. How does that work? Residual income in the travel industry when a person uh, comes into your company, how does that work? What's the, what's the residual based on? Oh, so it's based on um, the volume you create, you know, as far as travel goes. So, you can make money. And to answer a uh, holistic question, no, it's not a pyramid. And I, I always ask people, what is your question of what is a pyramid? OK, Nella. All right. Hey, Nella. <laughs> so I'm sorry. So, Nella, um, go ahead and put that in there. What do, what do you consider a pyramid? Because here, here's what I consider a pyramid. And I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, so to speak, on what you do. But to me, a traditional job can be considered a pyramid. Because in a job, you know, you have somebody where the boss is normally making all the money 
and the employees, you know, are making less of their boss, but the employees do most of the work. So that to me is a pyramid. Whereas in network marketing, you are leveraging others, you know, um, talent, the skill set. You you are leveraging that, but they have the ability to make as much money as they want based on the effort they put in. So to well, answer, let me ask, let me ask Nella a question because she uh, has commented. Sounds like a pyramid, and I guess that's what initiated your response. So, Nella, um, you you cited, uh, I guess, MCA as a company. Um, tell me about your experience with MCA you have here. It sounds like MCA, and then you said pyramid. So, Motor Club of America, and that's a is that a travel company or what kind of company is that? And and what made you say that uh, MCA, I guess you're saying that MCA is a type of pyramid. So, you know, I'm trying to get clarity. So share with me uh, what MCA does and how it's structured and why is it? A, first of all, I guess, what is a pyramid? And then how does MCA fall into that category? Okay, it runs off getting people to join. Now that's an interesting statement. So let me ask you a question. Um, things that get people to join. If you are in a health club, right? If you take a membership to a health club, someone in that health club, be it LA Fitness or whatever the health club is, they have sales agents and those sales agents, when I went in, they were trying to get me to join. Uh, would that be considered a, a pyramid? I'm just curious. OK, and why not? Karsten is here. Hey, Karsten, welcome, up, Karsten? To the, <laughs> welcome to the uh, session because you don't get paid to get others to join, really. So if the salesperson that was trying to get me to join he doesn't get paid for getting me to join the health club. I'm just curious. That's his job. So, Zach, is your is your job or the way that you earn income? When we say job, I'm going to take that to mean the way that you make income. Um, you as a member don't get paid. OK, OK, he as a member, he's he's an employee of the company. And so his the way he earns income is getting people to join the health club. Zach is a member of a company. His the name of your company. Well, if you feel like stating the name of your company, you have a name of, of a company. And from what I'm understanding is you just share with me that you earn income by uh, one of the ways is by helping people to save on their travel, and that would be like any travel agent. And then the other way that you earn income is by getting other people to be, to become travel agents. Did I hear you say that? Right. So the, the thing about um, the term pyramid scheme, you know, you got to kind of change your mindset a little bit about that because pyramids, every business in this world is set up in some type of way as a pyramid, like Mr. Muhammad is trying to explain, because I actually used to be in the gym industry myself. And I know for a fact, as a salesperson, your main job oh, is to recruit. Hey, Glenda. Yeah, hey. your main job in the healthcare and in health industry is to recruit as many people as possible to be a gym member so you can get paid off that membership. Now, the only difference between gym memberships and traditional jobs is that you do not have the ability to duplicate yourself. That's the biggest difference now in my company, which I'm, I'm not going to say the name right now because of the title of this blab is I'm trying to help other network marketers that are in my field, you know, build their business. OK, so in my travel company, you know, you can make money just off travel. So you never, ever have to you know, recruit or sponsor, as we call it, anybody into your company. You know, I have business partners making nine thousand plus dollar months just off selling travel i mean right now you know we we're in the 
travel season. Everybody's trying to travel. So you can just sell travel as a certified travel consultant and make a lot of money. So Yeah, but, but hold on a second. Hold on a second. You know, I want to I want to um, and I'm not taking anybody's side. I just want to be objective. So, <laughs> right. Zach, I hear what you're saying. Uh -huh. Now I hear what you're saying. And so when I was trying to get some understanding about the the, the term pyramid, because that was a term that Nella used and um, she cited a company by the name of MCA Motor Corp of America. OK, mm -hmm. I guess that's a pyramid. And so my question was, it, Nella's definition of a pyramid was when a person is trying to get someone else to join something. So I said in my own brain, I said, OK, well, you know, I just went for a membership for L.A. Fitness and there was a salesperson and they were trying to get me to join. So does that make L.A. Fitness um, a pyramid? And here's the reason why I'm asking if a pyramid is a, is a hierarchy of people who are gaining income from a sale that's being made, I'm just asking um, in that in that sales scenario with me and the salesperson, he went back to a manager, right? And he talked to the manager about giving me a quote unquote deal on my membership. And so I noticed right away that he had a sales manager, but then there was another person who was the overall um, facility manager. I guess he was the director of that LA fitness center. Right. And so I'm just saying, I'm just kicking this out here. Um, here you have a situation of hierarchy where there's a salesperson who's trying to get me to join and his sales. When he makes a sale, it generates an income, but it doesn't just generate an income for him. It also generates an income for the manager that he had to go and talk to. Right. Because he was trying to, I guess, figure out um, what price point he could offer the deal to me and still be OK with the company. Now, the manager that he went to speak with was not the end all say all. There was a director of the facility. I happened to meet all three. I met the salesperson, the manager of the sales team and the director of the facility. And so my question to you, um, uh, Nella, is in that scenario, is that a pyramid? I'm just asking because it there's a hierarchy there. Just just asking. Here's another thing that came to mind. Right. I'm I'm looking for. Hold on a second. One second. And Glenda, I see you trying to get on, Glenda. I'm not sure um, what's going on with your Internet connection. It, it's, it's hey, trouble. greetings, greetings. How are and I see Mr. Greg's on too. Greg, you don't want you don't want to um hop Greg. in, man. Grab a seat. <laughs> that was for early, early, early. Listen, on this um, let me call you back. I'm uh, on a conference that just started at ten. Are are you in? Okay. Oh, I see you, Glenda. Okay. Keep trying, Glenda. Soon, soon as I can get you in, Glenda. I will, um, I'll talk to you. Soon. All, right. All right, let's try this again, Glenda. All right. So where am I at? Where am I at? I'm over here in this conversation. Okay. So. Um, it just dawned on me. I'm out house shopping. Nella, um, help me because I'm really trying to understand. And Zach, maybe you can help me too. Right. Um, the sales, the the real estate agent, the real estate agent um, who uh, came and was showing me a couple of houses. Um, he works in a real estate office, and. In that office, there's several real estate agents. All of them are responsible for, I guess they're representing the, the seller of the house. In this case, he's representing the seller and he's showing me one of the listings. You with me? Nella, you with me? He's showing me a house that's among the listings that he has. Now, he is contracted by the seller who has listed his house with that agency. 
but this real estate representative is in an office with other real estate reps and certainly his income has to do with him uh, negotiating with me a sales for that house. His when he when he if he succeeds in having me buy that house, when he when the sale is consummated, he has a sales. He has a real estate broker that he splits his commissions with. He doesn't get all the money. Right. He has a broker who um, who is you know, responsible for the listings, I guess he's responsible for the listings. And some of the commissions is split between he, that sales representative and uh, his broker, right? And so that was just, just a scenario. And I'm wondering when you have a hierarchy, does that qualify as a pyramid? Because just another example that came off the top of my head was, you know, um, I have a friend who works for Coca-Cola and he's in, uh, he's in sales, he's in regional sales. He's a sales rep for Coca-Cola, but he has a district manager for the district that he's responsible in. But his district manager has a regional manager for the region of the company where we're in Southeast uh, United States that, that he's producing sales in. But that regional manager has a national sales manager for Coke that he answers to, who obviously answers to a vice president of sales. So the question is, whenever you have a hierarchy and there's a sales process going on, would that be a pyramid? I'm just asking. Zach, would you care to comment? Yeah, um, absolutely. Now jump in. I'm just trying to get clarity. Absolutely. Um so, Muhammad, I think what happens is in the network marketing industry, people get so hung up in the recruitment side of it that, you know, that's where the whole pyramid, you know, thing comes from. But in a, in a great network marketing company, regardless of what company you're in, you can always make money without recruiting people. So that's one thing I do love about our company is you can make a lot of money just off selling the travel. But guess what? On top of that, you can help some other people make a lot of money by teaching them what you know, training them and helping them be successful as well. Because here's the thing, um, my background, I come from corporate America, right? I come from where I train people in corporate America to be successful in their industry. Now, here's the thing, like you were saying, Mohammed, there is a hierarchy, right? So I train the sales reps, okay? I train the middle management. I train the management above that management on all the way up. Now, I also have a, a manager on top of me. Now, here is the thing. When in corporate America, I will always ask my sales team, let me ask you a question. Who does more work in this location, you or me? And my sales team will always say, well, we do, Zach. I said, well, who gets paid more money, you or me? They'll say, well, Zach, you do. I said, okay, how was that fair? But it goes all the way up the corporate ladder. I would do more work than my immediate supervisor. But guess what? My immediate supervisor got paid more than me. Now, most people will say, well, that's just a job. Like Nella said earlier, that's how jobs are set up. You're right. But guess what? That's a true pyramid. Whereas in the network marketing industry, the more people I help make money, yes, I may get a small portion. But if I help somebody, I have one of my business partners on the line right now. And Carson, make sure you give me some high fives if this makes sense. If I help Get Carson, Carson in here, Carson, there's an open seat. Come on in here because I just came in to, to um, Zach is a, is a close associate of mine and um, he wanted to get this first blab experience started. And I had done a blab just yesterday or day before. They're all running together now. And so uh, I came in to help him get this started because the rules of blab is in order for you to have a conversation in the Blab um, universe, there's got to be um, there's got to be two people to make your session live. Now, there, there doesn't have to be two active people. You could actually uh, have two Twitter accounts and take your device, if you have a cell phone or whatever the device is, and log into Blab, you know, with another device. 
and make your session active, but you've got to have at least two uh, people join or two accounts joining a session in order for that session to be activated. That's just a tidbit of information for anyone who's new to the Blab experience. So um, where where is where is um, Linda been trying to get on? I'm not sure. You know what's going on. <laughs> She's trying. She's definitely trying. I see Bernie. What's going nice. on, Bernie? Jump in here. Bernie is on. Good stuff. And Greg said he'll join a, a seat here in a, in a minute. Um, good, good, good. Let me let me finish this thought real quick. So what I was going to say, because um, yeah, because Miss Nella is not not in the room anymore. By the way, right, right. So this is for anyone still, you know, that's joining on this topic, whether or not you know network marketing, you know, that whole pyramid thing. But listen, guys, and hey, what's going on? I see Clay's in the building. <laughs> so. Guys, listen, I was going to say, you know, Carson is one of my business associates and in the network marketing industry, the beauty of it is if I if I help Carson make six figures within the next 18 months. OK, do you do you guys think Carson's going to be mad at me if I get a small kickback, especially if my small kickback is not coming out of his personal money? I think not. Carson, go comment for yourself. There it is. Not at all. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's the beauty of the network marketing industry is mm -hmm. that you can help as many people as you want make a lot of money and you are going to make some money just because you introduced them to the industry mm -hmm. so that that whole that whole pyramid conversation to me a job any form of business is a pyramid because there's always a hierarchy always always i was and the oh, point I was, that i was trying to make without taking sides is that um i noticed that whenever people are speaking about um, network marketing, they sometimes throw out the word pyramid and it has a negative connotation like, ah, pyramid, don't do that. And um, from what I'm understanding about the industry, it's really a sales organization that has a hi hierarchy. And so in my mind, what I was just sharing with Nella is that, you know, I've, I've got countless examples of that in the real estate industry, you know, you have, again, a real, a real estate agent, realtors, right? Um, and if it's a, a national organization like Century 21 or um, uh, ERA or any of the big, big insurance, I'm um, sorry, uh, real estate groups, there are national uh, sales managers. And since insurance came out of my mouth, there's a perfect example, you know, another example where you not only have a local sales rep, but you have a district manager, you have a regional manager in a sales organization, you name the sales organization, be it um, all state or um, you just name one. And um, so there's regional sales managers, there's national sales managers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And nobody, nobody cries foul pyramid Right. But it's nothing more than a sales organization with a hierarchy. So right. um, I think that I, I think that uh, this whole term has uh, been misconstrued by a lot of people. It's being misinterpreted by a lot of people. Um, and that can change. Yeah, that can change with education. I think it's just a matter of education. Listen, gang, I got to run. Um, I Zach needs somebody to come in and take one of these seats. I've got to run out. Um, I may be back in just a second, but I've got to run out. So is there someone here that can join in on this? There you go. Awesome. 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 Hey, Zach, hey, um, thank you so hey. much for allowing me to be a part of the session and uh, success to you. I may be back in here in just a bit. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. Thank you. So great. Welcome, man. Welcome to the, the Blab, man. Is this your first time on Blab or have you been on before? Well, no, no, I was on with uh, uh Marty the other day. Um, this is my first time actually speaking though on Blab. And <laughs> I'm really liking this um platform though. It's like this um this is really awesome. I really like this. Gotcha. So, real quick, Greg, tell tell the people that are watching a little bit about your background. And um, if you're in the network marketing industry, how you plan on using Blab? To market your company okay well my background is um i've been in business uh for many years i've had uh actual storefronts 
uh, candy stores, clothing stores, uh, general merchandise stores. Um, I've been in um, dabbling in network marketing for years and years since um, I don't want to really go to my age, show my age, <laughs> but um, for many, many years, um, I've been dabbling in that um, industry in and out. Um, one, I love the products and a lot of the companies, so it just made sense some time to join the company just to actually um, get the products wholesale. You know, it just made sense to me. If I could go into um, ShopRite or anywhere else and they tell me I could pay $40 or, or something and I could get the products at wholesale, I would surely do that, you know. But um, I am in network marketing now in uh, vacation travel, and I'm really enjoying that company. I love the benefits. I love the product, which is travel. And um, and this platform here, oh, my God, I, I'm just new to this. I'm really new to a lot of the social stuff. I mean, we do Hangouts, um, you know, Facebook. But this here, where you can engage with people from all over the place and actually four so people can jump on and we all can discuss something, we can argue if we like, and we can all just um, learn from each other. That This is amazing right here. This platform is amazing. Absolutely. And I see a couple of people um, jumped on. Mr. Christopher, we got uh, Winston jumped on. Welcome, welcome to the Blab. Um, if anybody in here is in the network marketing industry, uh, feel free to join in, you know, grab a seat. Um, you know, we're not here to talk about any particular company, but what I want to do is talk about online methods of attraction, you know, to your particular company. Um, now, Greg, you tell me if you had this happen to you before. You know, um, you, you've been in network marketing and the first thing, you know, your sponsor tells you is, you know, just make your list of names and call all your friends and family, you know, to get them to, to check out your offer. Right. So yes, my, my question has always been, well, what happens after your list runs out? You know, oh, man. yeah, so, that, that right there. And um, yeah, and it depends, if, too, if you go to a d different companies. And then now you're going through your list again. And now you got to go to the same people that told you no before <laughs> and, and tell them about your new thing you're in. And then they're looking at it like, oh, my God, here we go. And now they're ducking you and dodging you and running from you. And reality is you shouldn't really need to just go to your family and friends because most of the time uh, those, those individuals don't have the mindset or, or the entrepreneurial spirit. So with you, with, with, with using tools such as um, um, lead capturing leads and stuff, you actually will focus your attention on people that are actually wanting to do a business from home or that want to actually um, add a second source of income to their um, to their livelihood. Absolutely, and I see Karsten uh, made a comment. Seems like people are not wanting to invest in themselves, and you know that's absolutely true, Karsten. And one thing I want to throw back out there again is that I'm not telling people if you're in network marketing, I'm not telling you to stop doing the offline methods. You absolutely have to do the offline methods. What I'm saying is you take the offline methods, pair it together with online methods of attraction. So you become the hunted instead of the hunter, because sure. after you run out of your list of names, what do you do to get people to stay attracted um, to your company? He said, he said, no, so he said, he said you dwarfs. <laughs> no, soap, no, no, so <laughs> we're not doing this. So, and again, we're not here to talk about any particular network marketing company. I'm just here as a consultant. Um, Greg and I, we actually um, are consultants for people in the network marketing industry, and we teach people how to market themselves online. You know, we teach you how to brand yourself. And not just your company. Okay, here's, here's the thing, guys. People do business with people they like, know, and trust. Like, know, and trust. And that's a good thing about platforms like Blab is you can have conversations with people, you know, live conversations so people can get to know who you are, you know, and build that like, know, and trust with you. So that way they will naturally want to do business with you. So that's kind of what um, Greg and I have been working on with some of our other business partners, you know, that's actually on here now. We teach you how to market and brand yourself because I don't know. Well, first of all, is, is anybody on here in network marketing? Put that in the, in the comment stream. And I see, uh, what's that, Up by Music? 
Rebel Mouse blog, yeah, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. Those are awesome tools that you can do that you can use to create like, know, and trust with your audience. Okay, so my biggest thing that and on and on and on, yeah, and on and on. You're right. There's so many tools you can use. So one thing that I personally teach my team is how to combine the online with the offline. But guess what, guys? You have to give people value. That's the key. Yep. Team Avengers. That's right. <laughs> you have to give people value in the marketplace. Okay. People want to know. You know so for instance, okay, I'm in the travel industry, right? And in, in, in my in my company. But guess what? Say you're in the weight loss industry. So instead of you verbal vomiting on your friends every single day, spamming them with your company, how about you give them some value on why they need to lose weight? You know, why they need to exercise some more. If you do a blog about that every single day, then people will naturally want to know what you do. Yeah. Lay her down and smack them. <laughs> okay. Oh, who is that? <laughs> give something free and really help. Yeah, I mean, you, you can give somebody your product free. Absolutely. You can give them a free sample. You know, give them a free sample, provide them value, tell them how that's going to add value to their life. And they'll, they'll definitely want to, you know, come back to you for more. So, and what do you mean by give them something free and really help? Why don't he get on his joint, whoever that is, so he could just say actually what he's trying to, what he's really trying to um say. Welcome, welcome, Ed. Welcome, Ed. Howdy, Ed. Howdy. We so, Ed, um, seats. We have seats if anybody want to hop on. So, for all the new people that hopped on to the Blab, what we're talking about, if you're in a network marketing company, we're talking about online ways to attract people to your offer. We're not speaking about any particular company here. We're just talking about online ways other than the traditional way, you know, to get people to join your team. So if anybody on here has any specific examples, I mean, please take a seat and let us know what do you do on a regular basis to attract people to your offer. All right, Carson, got to step out of the room. Mm -hmm. and he said, Yo, hey, I understand. Luckily, my son right now is way across the, <laughs> the house somewhere asleep, so. I totally get that. But if anybody else wants to hop in this conversation, you know, definitely take a seat. Because what I've noticed, especially with new people in network marketing, is they get excited, right? And they go on social media and they spam all their friends. That's all you see on their Facebook page, all you see on their Twitter page. They're just spamming all their friends with the company. Yeah, take a seat, y'all. Join the discussion. We want to know. What ways you guys attract people to your company if you're even in a network marketing company? Or even if you're not in a network marketing company, if you're in a traditional business, you know, tell us what type of ways you use to attract people to your company. You know, I'm interested to know. Uh, myself, again, I'm based out of Columbus, Georgia, and I do a lot of consulting uh, for people in network marketing, and I help them attract people with attraction marketing to their company. Oh, PRLs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Greg, I'm not sure if you're familiar with PRLs, but um, those are it's an awesome tool to use. P PRLs pretty much is private label rights. Private label rights. So what that means is you can um, get somebody to produce you a sales page already. You can have an ebook. Your ebook can be about weight loss. It can be about saving money. And the ebook is already put together for you. And then with private label, you can change all the information to make it seem like you created the whole thing. So now you can take that and sell it to other people and make a profit, you know, off of something that was created for you and you just threw your name on it. So private label is just awesome. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah, that's something I got to look into. Yeah, man. Private label. Um, I actually bought a couple of private labels not too long ago, and I'm actually working on putting it together to sell on my blog. So. The private label, and it, Mr. Ed said, "I just set up my Yeti microphone, trying to figure out how." To, oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, definitely hop on, Mr. Ed. We, we definitely want to hear from you. Definitely want to hear from you, Glenda. If you can try to hop back on too, you know, definitely try to join in on this conversation. And everybody viewing, uh, tap in. Go tell a little bird. 
<laughs> so yeah. we can get more people. Go tell Little Bird, you know, this this platform here, Blab, I'm so happy we found it. Um, if you were on earlier, uh, my mentor, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Mahdi, actually introduced Greg and I to this platform. And I mean, it, it's going to be phenomenal in the world of business or regardless of what, you know, what niche you're in. I, I was watching the Blab earlier where they had four personal trainers on there giving people value on different workouts you, do, you can do to lose weight. So, so guess what's going to happen? Those personal trainers are going to get clients, you know, to buy from them just from giving them value off a blab. 365K on Twitter alone. I mean, I'm telling you, Twitter, they did something with this platform right here. So when you're talking about online ways, guys, you're getting people live into the, a discussion to talk about their service, you know, their product, whatever it is. People are joining in. This is this is this is attraction marketing at its best, right here. Yep, more followers. followers. Absolutely, absolutely. I can't tell you. Um, my first blab was actually yesterday, and I got tons of followers on it yesterday, Greg. I mean, tons. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I haven't used my Twitter in a long time, but I think I'm gonna have to start uh, getting back on that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, welcome, Sylvia. Sylvia's in the in the blab. Sylvia, if you want to hop on and join it, you know, take a seat. Feel free. Yeah, yeah, no, we still blabbing. <laughs> I had uh <laughs> I had some more of my um my business partners hop on, so we're still blabbing. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh yeah. So again, for all the new people who just hopped on. We're not talking about any particular company, any particular uh, product. So the topic is, here's the topic. If you're in a network marketing company, okay, online methods of attraction, online methods. So if you are in a network marketing company, feel free to join in. We want to know how do you attract people to your company outside of the traditional ways that you were taught when you first got started. Um, what I personally do I am a consultant myself. I help people in network marketing companies brand themselves online, market online, attract people through it through, uh, through attraction marketing to their product or service. So that's what I personally do. I'm a consultant. Oh, you write your own software? Make oh, that's awesome. How long have you been writing your own software? You picked music. Yeah, writing your own software, that's cool. I mean, you definitely are branding yourself by being able to write your own software to different niche websites, so that's phenomenal. So, Sylvia, are you, um, do you own a business yourself? If so, what type of business you own? Tell us about it. And I mean, this is for anybody who, who joined on, you know, tell us if you own a business, what type of business? What ways you, you attract and invite people to your business? Right. We are, we're here to um, give value. We're here to learn. We're here to all um, build off each other. Absolutely. That's why I'm so excited about this platform, man. It, it gives you an opportunity to go live with people all across the world. Yep. I think Nella told me earlier she was in New England. I mean, that's awesome. All right, Mr. Hey, how's it going? Hey, guys, can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? we can hear you loud and clear. You can hear me? We yes, can. loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, so welcome to the blast. So, Ed, um, tell the people a little bit about yourself. I mean, if you, if you own a business, tell us a little bit about it. All right, just give me a second here. So you guys aren't getting feedback when you talk? Not at all. No. All right. I'll just turn up my speaker so I can hear you better, guys. No problem. And Sylvia says, no, I want to do something, but I keep having this nightmare. <laughs> Sylvia, <laughs> what type of nightmare are you having, Sylvia? <laughs> I, I'm, so while Sylvia said that, um, as I as I mentor entrepreneurs and help them brand themselves, you know, I talk to them a lot about fear, right? 
And the definition of the word fear is false evidence appearing real. So you have to be willing to step out on faith when it comes to starting your own business. And, you know, you can't be scared. Like you may you may fail. Right. But what you do is you learn from your failure. So don't be scared to fail, uh, Sylvia. You can't be scared to fail at all. You know, I've been in, I've started a couple of different companies. Right. And I, I failed in some. But you learn from them and you move on. You move on. So tell us about this nightmare you have. But you know, I definitely don't want you to be scared, though. <laughs> and Ed, whatever you um, whenever you're ready, my friend. I mean, I'm ready. So what's what's your question? What can I answer for you? So we're we're, we're talking about the, the the topic was you know network marketing and um using attraction methods to build your business online. So have you ever been in a network marketing company? Are you in one now? You know what type of industry are you in? How do you attract people to your offer? Yep, I got involved with uh, network marketing back in 1989, a company called New Skin. Just for a short period of time, got blew out of the water, uh, you know, went to my family, friends, and got blown out of the water. <laughs> then in 1991, got involved with a company called Quorum International, based out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And that ran until about 1995. And that's when I built the team, a little over 11,000 people. Uh around the world and unfortunately the company imploded it was a startup and uh it imploded got back into corporate america then in 2000 i started building uh, a network marketing training organization and personal development business with a partner of mine who did really well with me in the uh, uh quorum company and we did a lot of ppc driving traffic to our sites our landing pages created a whole bunch of offers together and then uh, started doing two day workshops all around the world, training network marketers on the basic fundamentals of contacting, inviting and uh, moving people through the process, getting them a uh, commitment to show up to see their business presentation. And then ultimately how to show their company's plan, how to answer questions, handle objections and, and then close. Uh, we did that from 2000 to 2008, built about 2 million people in our database online. Wow. Then I got out of the industry and uh, started doing just lead generation in the real estate industry from 2008 to 2012, built uh, another big online business, about 5 million leads in the real estate business, mm. and then took that company public and then uh, to the stock exchange. And then just recently, earlier this year, turned over operations to a C-level team so they could take it to the American Stock Exchange. So I just started up my training organization again and uh, getting myself out there. So utilizing attraction marketing today, the best way to do it, because back in the day in the early 2000s, mid 1990s, the internet really wasn't prevalent then. You know, Facebook just started back in what, 2006. So, uh, I was kind of towards the tail end when Facebook was coming around of my network marketing training organization, let alone building a business. So with that, uh, I would say today the best way to do it is to, number one, set up a blog. Number two, use this simple philosophy, invest, learn, and teach. So every one of us is, who's in network marketing has probably been out to training organization, uh, training events with their company or have watched training on YouTube from, you know, Eric Worre and Jeff Olson. Those guys uh, were actually involved with Quorum the same time I was back in 1991. So I know them very well. They're, they built a large organization with Quorum. So basically what you do is you invest in yourself, take notes. So that's the I for invest. You're learning. And then whatever you're learning, you're taking notes. And then you teach it. You just regurgitate it on a three-minute video, two-minute video. Type up a little your notes in uh, some kind of format that you can put it on a blog post, 300, 500 words or more, 700 words. And then blog every single day. And then shoot that blog post into all your social media accounts. Let it be known and announce it in Facebook uh, do some Pinterest as well with your images that you put on your blog and direct them back to your site. 
And within just a few short months of being consistent, and that's the key word, being consistent, you will start attracting people to your blog. Now, if you're uploading your videos to YouTube and you're putting the right keywords in based on the content of your blog, whatever those topics are, you're going to get traffic from many different sites. Set up a blogger.com, set up a tumblr.com, uh, and then, of course, if you have a blog and you point those two Google assets uh, to your blog, you're going to start getting some organic traffic very quickly, regardless of what the keyword and phrase is, uh, simply because consistency is what Google's looking for, along with optimization with on your blog with SEO, Yoast, etc. But then another great thing to do is to do some Google Hangouts and uh, post them on your Facebook page as well. Ask people to share. And when you start being consistent with that each and every week, uh, taking what you've posted on your blog and then turn it into a live video, you're going to get people attracted to that, as well as when you do these blabs, uh, you know, let people know about your site, which now that I've just hopefully added a whole bunch of value, I can oh, let you yes. guys know my site is edzimbardi.com. And if you go to my site, I have a blog there as well. Uh, you can get some tips from me. Um, I am. I just redid my site, so I stopped blogging. It's being reformatted. I got uh, somebody helping me out, so I'll be starting up all my tips again here real soon. So that's what I do, I'm doing now, and I highly suggest anyone who's brand new to do the same thing. It's a low-cost way to get up and running and start attracting people to your site. And then maybe start investing a little bit in Facebook and put up you know $5 a day for – just to get some clicks, you know, and drive traffic to your public page. You should definitely have a public page for yourself if you're in network marketing. And uh, if if you'll notice, if you go to my site, my site has nothing to do with the company I'm involved with. So beyond being a trainer, I also am, am not exposing what company I am. I want people to look at my content, see if they there's a connection between that me and them, if they perceive that connection there, and then take it to the next level and open up a community, open up a conversation. So that's one major thing. The next major thing is you should be reaching out to people inside of Facebook. With Facebook having 1.49 billion accounts, mm -hmm. with 800, 900 million of them active on a uh, a regular basis, you know. Get inside of all the different network marketing groups. Don't spam your link like I heard you say before. Uh, what you do is you just engage people in conversation. Get to know them. Learn what their needs, wants, desires, and their pain is in their life. And ask them, how's that working out for you with that, that spam link? And then share with them an alternative. Get to know them. And then when the time is right, you move them from that Facebook chat conversation to a phone call and then get to know them just like you were meeting someone at a party. Cause here's the bottom line. And I don't understand why so many people don't do this. If you've ever had a best friend and I would imagine every one of us have had a best friend in their lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that best friend a stranger at one point in time? Absolutely. Of course. So if somebody had to introduce that person to you either you know, at a party, at an event of some sort, or they just said, hey, how are you? My name is such and such. And you said, hey, my name is such and such. And you engage in a conversation. Either you started it or they started it. And then you got to know one another. And then over time, you sold yourself to them that they would want you to be their best friend. And they did the same to you. And then ultimately, you hung out all the time and you called each other best friends. So the bottom line is, in social media, you need to be social and not be spamming. So socially, meaning you open up an engaged conversation with each person. Get to know them. You don't have to give value to them right off the bat. You need to get to know them. If, you're, if you and I just met at a party, if the three of us just got, you know, we're at a party, and so the host of the party – you were friends with and I was friends with, the host of the party is going to introduce us and probably say something that we had in common. Well, Facebook already exposes what we may or may not have in common, right? Because you put all the your interests there. So you, you target people in a good way, meaning 
people who are have similar interests and you just open up conversation with them. And when you do that, you have common interests, you get to learn more about them. Now, you shouldn't necessarily go in with what I call a recruiter's mindset. You should go in with a relationship mindset. And that simply means get to know them. And then if the time is right on your very first conversation, you may be able to share with them what it is you're doing in your company. But most of the time, you don't need to. You need to just continue the conversation at another time. And if you did that and you filled your pipeline with these kind of conversations in your Facebook inbox, what will happen over time as you get online, you see they're online, you just check in, next thing you know, they're going to share some pain with you one day. And then when you do that, next thing you know, boom, you have the opportunity to share with what you're doing. So just get to know some people. Absolutely. Hey, I mean, Rob, Rudy, how you doing, man? Hey, Rob, what's going on? And um, I see a lot of other internet marketers popped on. If you guys want to join in and take a seat, listen, Ed just gave tons of value. I hope you guys were, were listening, taking some notes. I mean, guys, anybody new to this industry, even if you're not new, if you're a seasoned veteran to this industry, the value you just gave you guys is priceless. Guys. Let, let me also share this with piggyback on what uh, Rob just said. All right. Anyone who's new in the industry that may not have a lot of connections can simply start off on Facebook and doing as Rob just mentioned, you go up in the search bar up top and say people who uh, live in whatever city, Phoenix, and like hiking. You know, if you have an interest in hiking and it'll bring up a whole bunch of people who have an interest in hiking. And so you can connect with them and speak their language or people who live in uh, Kansas City and like Eric Worre, you know, or Network Marketing Pro, since, you know, that's what his, his brand is. And it will bring up people who are connected with Eric Worre or Tony Robbins, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do this kind of search in Facebook and never run out of contacts of people that you can just start a conversation with and fill your pipeline up and have, you know, three to five conversations a day, even if you only have an hour a day. And ultimately, you know, you'll move through that process within 30 days. You'll, you'll have so many people reaching back out to you in conversation. You can talk to them about your business. So I, I'm real excited about social media, Facebook, and, and what a new person can do when they first get started if they happen to run out of their warm market quickly because they mess it all up. Man. Oh, Ed, you're right. That's absolutely. You're getting some of our, uh, Greg and I have a couple of business partners on the line right now and they're getting excited because one of our mentors, everything you just said, he's been teaching us this stuff for a while now. And it's like, everything you just said, it's just like, it's clicking. It's like, it's like, it makes sense. So Greg, get back. To, does it make sense now? Yeah. Oh man. It's, it's reinforcing everything we've been learning over the last couple of months. And um, yes, he just dropped tons and tons of nuggets and value to everybody that's on here listening. It, it's just it's just awesome and amazing. And this platform, what do, Ed, what do you think about this platform now and, and this technology here? I think it's phenomenal for two reasons. One, you can get your team on a, a blab like this and if you're a leader and you can bring on some, you know, three of your team members uh, on the live video and everyone else on your team can join, just like you would do a conference call. And you can specifically share all the stuff you want to talk about, about your team, you know, about your company. And as people fill the chat room, you know, they'll learn what you're teaching. They'll, you'll obviously talk about your company and you may attract some people that way, you know, which is cool. But you also can just get on and talk about, as you guys started talking about, network marketing, attraction marketing, or direct sales, MLM, and not even mention your company name and just give pure value to the community. Because the bottom line is, if you're in network marketing, you really need to cross the bridge and learn how to be a network marketing professional. And a network marketing professional doesn't go and cross recruit people from another company into your company. What you do is you build relationships with people. You encourage those other people who are in network marketing to, they got involved for a reason. 
you know, they have their goals, dreams, passion, and their passion may be their company. Now, if they're struggling and you learn through building a relationship over time that they're struggling, then they may reach out to you and find out how they could be part of your team. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with consuming products from other people you build a relationship with. For instance, my cabinets up up in my in my kitchen are filled with a variety of different network marketing companies' products because I enjoy those products. I don't necessarily go to Walmart and buy you know the, the stuff there. I'll buy them through a distributor. So, but at the same time, someone learns about the company I'm with, if it's unique and they are not don't have that product or service, then of course I'm going to offer it to them. I'm going to offer the product, but I'm not going to try to recruit them unless they're ready for change. So as a network marketing professional, we all need to be encouraging one another and help whatever challenges people are having so they can go to the next level and really build their business. Absolutely. Ed just said uh, a lot of good things there because that's why in this particular lab, I did not mention my particular company's name. I left it open for the network marketing industry. So that way we can come together as a community. And guess what? If you guys have a product or service that I feel is going to add value to my life, I'm going to buy that from you. Because guess what now? I know you. <laughs> All right. That's right. I know you. So I'm going to go to Ed. If I need any extra training to make myself better, I'm going to Ed. Because I know what Ed, he knows what he's talking about, guys. And, and that's what it's about using these platforms and being a network marketing professional is networking together so that way we help each other succeed, guys. We gotta help each other succeed. So, um, Greg, you think you wanna piggyback all this? Uh, I'm just in awe. And I'm just like loving this whole, whole platform here. And um, Ed, that, it was like um, finding a, 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 a piece of gold <laughs> today with you popping on here. Because, I mean, we are looking to learn how to attract and, and, and bring people to our business, our organizations. And then you just jump on here and give us all that wealth of knowledge. You've been in the game for so long. You've built businesses and companies. I mean, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't have found you any other way besides on here <laughs> to get on here and help us um, give these people some value and knowledge that are listening and viewing. I appreciate that. Yeah, and Ed, um, go ahead. Make sure you type in the comment section your website again. I want to make sure people can reach out to you if they need any training, you know, in this industry. I mean, because guys, listen, this is an industry where it's ongoing learning. You have to continue to learn every single day, okay? It's, it's changing every single day. You got to learn stuff every single day. So make sure you reach out to Ed. You know, and learn all you guys can about this industry. He's a wealth of knowledge, as you can see. You know, um, I'm going to post uh, Greg and I, our site on Facebook is Create Lifestyle Freedom. You know, so you can find us on Facebook, Create Lifestyle Freedom. We will teach you guys also some other ways to attract people to your offer because it is about becoming the hunted instead of the hunter, guys. So yes. just give people you know, to come to you. Let, let me share this as well. I can tell you that the majority of people who get involved with network marketing are all excited and they have this mindset. They're going to go and blow it out of the water and, you know, become full time quickly and just recruit a whole bunch of people. And, and that just doesn't happen. What the brand new person should do when they first get started is real. If they're not already into personal development, they need to make personal development the cornerstone of their business. And what I mean by that is there's 96 15-minute increments in a day. If a person is busy and they have a full-time job and they get involved with network marketing on a part-time basis, however, they need to at least carve out 15 minutes a day and start immersing themselves in guys like Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar's material, Brian Tracy, uh, Dennis Waitley, uh, uh, Bob Proctor. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, Les Brown is one of the most m motivational, inspirational guys. He changed my life back in 1991. Uh, Les is, I love Les. He's a personal friend of mine. I've known him for years, done some work with him. If you don't 
immerse yourself in personal development and work on yourself, you will not last in this industry. You will quit at some point in time. So the personal development, there you go. <laughs> got absolutely. You really have to work on yourself. I tell a lot of new people that join my team all the time, spend the time on personal development so you don't get to the point where if you don't reach your goals that you think you're going to do in the next 30, 60, 90 days and quit, you know, be consistent with your personal development and it will keep you in the business long term. Yes, Eric Worre has a phenomenal event coming up, personal development event, and uh, it's coming up, uh, yeah, September 22nd. Yep, and I live in Atlanta, in Georgia. Oh, you're in Atlanta? Oh, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Where are you guys? I'm in Columbus, Georgia. Oh, okay, awesome. I'm, you guys know where? Way. You guys know where the mall? Well, you know where the mall of Georgia is. Oh yeah. So I'm two exits north of the mall of Georgia in uh, that little resort called uh, Chateau Alain. Oh. Brazelton. Wow, no, man. where Usher got married? Yeah, that's hey, where I live. Hey, I was at the Chateau about three months ago, man. It's awesome. Where are you? <laughs> yes, yes. It's awesome. I, couple, I love uh, it up here. I, I, I did a couple of wine tasting while I was there. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff. So, yeah, guys, got a lot of uh, ball players that live in here. Uh, that yeah. since the Falcons complex is just about 10, 15 minutes away. Awesome. So, are you originally from Atlanta? No, New York, but I've been down here since 1979, so okay. kind of been so, here for a while. Yeah, up New north. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm originally from Washington, D.C. myself. Been been down in Georgia since 2001. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so good stuff. Um, but guys, man, yeah, anybody else want to take a seat? Hop in. It. Man, Ed is giving y'all tons, tons of value, man. I mean, and the biggest word I've, I've heard from him tonight is consistency consistency. You got to be consistent in your personal development. You got to be consistent in your blog posts. You got to be consistent in your online methods of attraction every single day. Because guys, listen, I'm going to tell you something, right? There are people, listen to me, there are people out there when you started in network marketing that want to see you fail. Okay? So they see you posting all this stuff now, right? They see you posting it, but they want to know when you're going to quit. They want to know because guess what? Your friends and your family knew you before you got in network marketing. They knew your work ethic, right? They, they know you, or they, at least they think they know you. So personal development is key. Consistency is key. And guess what? Don't quit. Don't quit. Whatever you do, whatever your method of attraction is going to be, stay consistent with it. Ed threw out a lot of different marketer names, okay? I hope you guys paid attention to the marketers because one thing you want to do is study other successful marketers in the industry and just do what they did, guys. That's it. Just do what they did. Also, guess what? If you are doing Facebook PPC, you can actually target some of those marketers' uh, followers. If you type in their name, it will target their followers so you can get your info in front of their people. You know, I'm gonna actually do a, a blab about that one day, how to target people on Facebook through PPC. But guys, there are so many different ways that you can market and brand yourself online and have people chasing you down, busting down your door, so you don't feel like you're chasing Uncle Bob and Aunt Sally around every single day. <laughs> All right. Sure. So yeah, and, hey. Rob, so does anybody have any uh, objections, questions, you know, what challenges, what's their biggest challenge in the business or how to handle certain situations? I'd love to, to give here. So if anybody has anything they want to ask, I'd be more than happy to help out. Yeah, so I, I think somebody had talked about it uh, being a scam, network marketing. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Ed? So let's, let's do a little role play. Go ahead and ask me the question. <laughs> Okay, the question is, when people, what do you do when people tell you that it's a scam? I say, a pyramid scheme. <laughs> okay, well, that's two different things. Two different uh, things. There you so go. the first thing, I, let's, let's talk about the scam one. The first thing I would say is, what is your definition of a scam? See, I'm going to turn it around. I'm never going to answer the question until I get the prospect to be more specific and as I take them through the process to be 
specific. What will evolve through this conversation is how ridiculous of a statement they are saying by being ignorant and not knowing about this industry that they just blatantly say out, say it's a scam. So with that being said, I would say, what's your definition of a scam? What do you believe they would say at that point in time? What would they say? Um, okay. I don't know because that ain't my mindset. Exactly. <laughs> so imagine if you took that mindset when they say, well, you know, this is a scam or the same thing. If somebody says, it's a, you know, well, that sounds like a pyramid. The first words out of my mouth would be, what is your definition of a pyramid? That, that, and what would they say? Ooh. They normally would they say, oh, not even know. you got to go out and recruit people. And, and all the people that the person on top makes all the money. And uh, that that is 100% true. The person at the top of a pyramid makes all the money. Where do you work? <laughs> and they're going to tell me XYZ <laughs> company. And I'll say, and who's the, what's the name of the person who owns the company at the top? I'm going to use their <laughs> words. Oh, you have to use their words. Uh, it's so-and-so. Well, do they make all the money? Yeah. And where are you in that food chain? I'm down here. Okay. So are so, so you're telling me you work at a pyramid, correct? I'm going to get them to agree. Oh, if man. they don't, then I'm going to be confused. And I'm going to say, I'm confused. Please explain to me how your job is not a pyramid. And still, I will have not said anything about the fact that they're claiming what I just showed them is a pyramid until I get them to realize how absolutely ridiculous their statement is about what I just showed them is a pyramid. Ooh, no, that, that was good. That was good. Because it, it already had me thinking it, rethinking it again. <laughs> that that was good. A hey, motivator, yeah. He's he's agreeing with you. He said exactly how stupid they sound. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A job is a pyramid scheme. And if and you know, here's the bottom line. You really should everyone should educate themselves about corporate America. You see, in the early 1900s, the Industrial Revolution was formed. You see, people didn't come over to this country from all around the world to get a job. They came over here to have freedom, to use their skills er, and, and learn trades. And that's how this country was for at least 100 years. It wasn't until the early 1900s when big business was formed. And when biz, biz, big business was formed, and I'm just citing some history, some basic history here. When big business was formed, jobs were created. And the definition was an employee, people without a dream. Because they obviously went to work to earn a wage and they didn't want to learn a skill or a trade as an entrepreneur and do barter, big business was formed. Yep, absolutely. And it, it, here's one thing I realized from most people that I talk to, right? Yep. They, they love to use big words that they have no understanding of. Like what? <laughs> Pyramid. <laughs> they, <like it. laughs> they, they always say, oh, that's a pyramid. And, and basically what they're, what they're using is what they heard somebody else say. Yes. Okay. What you guys have to remember is people's opinions are just that. Their opinions. It's not fact. The bottom line is if most people research this industry and saw how many millionaires that it actually created, they will not use that terminology ever. Because like Ed said, in corporate America, guys, there's only one CEO. And that CEO is making all the money because he is on the top of that pyramid. And the people, the workers who do all the work that go to work slaving 40 to 50 hours every single week are making less money than the owner of the company. Let me, guys, let me, let me tell you guys, like, listen, listen to me very clearly, okay? If you are working on a holiday and your boss is not there, you're in a pyramid. <laughs> That's true. Yep. You know, here, here, here's uh, 
I guess the bottom line to what you're saying about uh, this particular topic, when someone in your family or someone in your war market talks about what you're doing being a pyramid, the best response right off the bat is, uh, do you really believe that I would get involved with something that's illegal? I mean, you know me. And if you're going after your top 10 when you're new and your top 10 people are people you have a lot of credibility with and someone gives you a ridiculous objection or question about it being a pyramid, that's the first thing I would always say to someone close to me is, do you really think based on what I've been doing with my life and have five kids, I'm going to get involved with an illegal pyramid scheme? Because pyramids are illegal. I mean, come on now. But if you're talking to somebody who's a prospect that you met and you set an appointment and you sit down with them and you show them your business or you connect with them on Facebook and they come out with, by saying that it's a pyramid, that's when I, I would push back and say, well, what's your definition of a pyramid? So I just wanted to clarify that because you, you should be – there's different responses to different types of prospects, whether it's a cold, warm, a cold market prospect or a warm market prospect. Absolutely. And uh, Nora had a great question there, Ed. She says, how do you deal with copycats of your bid strategy? So, you know, one thing I will say, again, since we're all in this industry together, is we're always sharing ideas back and forth anyway, right? So guess what? What does she mean by that, though? Yeah, kind of clarify what you mean by that. Because here's, here's my thing, Nora. Um, in this industry, it's okay to be a copycat as long as you copy the right cat. <laughs> All right, because yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, on that point, every one of us has always heard practice makes perfect, mm -hmm. and to the most part, the majority of people would agree with that. However, I don't. Perfect practice makes perfect, and I give you a classic example up until just recently, Tiger Woods has been practicing his ass off. And his practice hasn't made perfect. It isn't until he has perfect practice, then he's perfect when he's on his game. So that's real, real important for people to understand. As far as copycats go, um, the best way to outdo a copycat is to just build a bigger business. And there's so many people out there. It doesn't matter if somebody's copying you. You just blaze your own trail. And don't worry about a copycat. Absolutely. I, I hope that clarified your question, Nor. I mean, yeah, like you said, you just, I'll build them. And here's a few other things to think about. I, I saw up in the thread here someone talking about sometimes they get, uh, they have have received some uh, prospects say to them, oh, that sounds like an Amway thing or an Amway scam. And I always push back and I, I ask them because I know they're being ignorant. What do you know about Amway? And of course, most of the time they'll come back and say, well, I heard it's a pyramid scheme. Well, I would say, you know, what's your definition of a pyramid? And we go through that dialogue back and forth. And then ultimately say, you know, pyramids are illegal. But let me educate you a little bit about Amway. Number one, uh, Amway is one of the oldest network marketing companies. And they went through a lot of litigation back in the late 50s, early 60s. And they actually paved the way. God bless Amway. Without them, the majority of the network marketing companies, their sales companies, wouldn't be here today. In fact, this industry of network marketing has created more millionaires than any other industry in the entire world. So is it similar to Amway? Yeah, as far as the industry goes. But it's not the same company. It's not the same business model. So if you're ready to have an intelligent conversation, let's do it. In fact, did you know that there are several direct sales companies that are publicly traded that actually have profits, big profits right now on the New York Stock Exchange? And some of those are New Skin, Herbalife, Tupperware. In fact, do you maybe have some Tupperware in your kitchen? How about some Pampered Chef? Because those are direct sales companies. In fact, are you familiar with a a, a guy that's – I'm not sure if he's quite known, well-known or not, but his name is Warren Buffett. He heavily invested in Pampered Chef, which happens to be a direct sales company. 
just like the company I'm representing as an independent distributor. So as far as credibility goes or research about the company or the industry, I think we're way beyond that now. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous that people would think that you go to Google to do your research instead of actually going to, you know, factual information about, you know, industry trade journals, uh, you know, about the industry. If you really want to know more about an industry, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, you, I mean, you said drop some more, uh, some more good nuggets, guys. Listen, if you are in this industry, you need to study the industry that you are in. It's, it's absolutely OK to know about other network marketing companies, what they offer, how long they've been around. But when you have these people that try to tell you the negative about a company, you can't combat that with knowledge. OK, because you study the industry, you can kind of tell them how Amway been around 50 plus years, how Dexter Yeager is the richest you know, MLM are out there, you know, so I mean, you can tell people that. OK, so you have to study this industry, always develop yourself. So it goes back to that personal development that Ed talked about earlier. OK, so always study the industry and um, just kind of know what you're talking about so you can defend yourself when people do say crazy things to you. Now, I will tell you guys what I've noticed in this industry, the younger generation, the millennials, they got it figured out. The millennials got network marketing figured out. They do not want to go work a job for 40, 50 years for somebody else. Uh -uh. OK, there, there's a team out there right now called Job for What? <laughs> All right. It's a it's a group of millennials out there and they're like, Job for what? Why am I going to go work a job with all this technology in the world, social media to where I, I can share my story, have my friends come along and we all get rich together. I mean, guys, the millennials have it absolutely figured out. So if you're on here and you're, you're questioning yourself about your company, whether or not you're in the right industry, listen, Eric Worre, you know, says the best. You know, we, we definitely have the right industry. There is a better way. Network marketing is a better way, guys. So you are in the right industry. Um, let's see. It's another question. Hey, motivator, would you pursue recruiting someone that responds to you with those type of objections? Um, I mean, me personally, it depends on how I will initially, but if it gets to a point where I feel like I'm begging them to join my business, I probably won't. There's plenty of people in this world I can talk to, and that's the whole point of this attraction marketing blab, is that if I have somebody that initially they're asking me those type of questions, and I'm educating them on the right way, and they still are negative, I'm just going to make them a customer and keep moving. You know, I'm not going to worry about trying to recruit them as a distributor. So, uh, yeah, if it's a family member, then uh, yes, I w they're going to continue to watch you over the next 30, 60, 90 days once you first expose them to what you're doing. And they're going to see if you're still around. And that's why I love Facebook uh, and other social media outlets, because they're probably if they're a family member or a close friend, they're one of your Facebook friends. So they're going to see what you're doing. And eventually they're going to have to get involved uh, or. They're just going to unfriend you um, <laughs> because they're just getting so annoyed and can't admit that what you're doing is great. Uh, if it's somebody you're just meeting on Facebook for the first time and, you know, they have those objections, you don't unfriend them, but you stay connected with them. As uh, somebody just mentioned in, in the chat here, you definitely let them follow you and get to know them, but you should follow up with them. And. I have a, a follow-up process that I call the drip process. You just drip on them, drip, 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 and you drip on them with updated information about your company, new compensation plan changes, new rank changes for yourself or someone on your team, a new uh, incentive program that was just uh, announced, or some PR from your company that your company just uh, did something nice in the community or globally around the world. Uh, sales numbers that come out for the company, um, which is usually record-breaking numbers in network marketing for most companies. Um, you know, drip on them from that perspective. Also drip on them with holidays or uh, as you see on their Facebook page, you drip on them, staying in touch with someone that's not necessarily business-related, but it's relationship-related is key to ultimately hitting someone up at the right time in their life 
where they're finally sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's when the attraction marketing kicks in and they reach out to you and say, Hey, let me learn a little bit more. Can I see that one more time? I'm, I'm ready to get started. Absolutely. And, um, I see Mr. B nice, my boy Carson down here asked a question. How about when they say, I'm going to see how it works for you first. So Carson, that ties right back into what Ed was saying with everything. First of all, staying consistent. Second, they want to see how long you're going to stay consistent. So if you're not dripping on them, like you said, then guess what? They're trying to prove you wrong, but it's your job for you to prove them wrong. Okay. So you got to stay consistent. Keep giving them value every single day. And guess what? They will eventually join you if they see that you're staying consistent. You know, the problem I see with network marketers is they get started. And here's the thing. Most comp plans, most network marketing companies I see, they have like a two to five year plan, right? They tell the distributors two to five years, six figures, blah, blah, you know, that type of thing. But here's the thing. You got to realize it took you how many years to get where you are right now? Okay, it doesn't happen overnight. So let's say, for instance, it takes you 10 years in network marketing to make $100,000 residual. That's still better than 40 years at a job where you probably would never see six figures at all. So, Carson, to answer your question, you have to get started. You have to stay consistent and you cannot quit because as soon as you quit, they're going to say, aha, I knew you were going to quit. I knew it wasn't going to work. And guess what? It's not that the company is not working, because like we said earlier, Amway been around 50 years. It's working for somebody. OK, if you quit, though, it's because you didn't do the work. You didn't stay consistent. So that's what you got to do. Stay consistent. Drip on them a little bit, but try to stay away from the spamming effect where you're always spamming and chasing your friends down all the time. They will unfriend you. <laughs> like Ed said. Yeah, you have to have some posture. And when someone says, well, I'm going to see how it works for you first. <clears throat> first thing I would say to them is let's put, let's put that aside for a second. You know, let's just put that whole thing about seeing how it works for me aside. And let's say that it does. Does this opportunity have an, do you have enough interest in this opportunity that if it does work for me, that you would get involved? Cause you're looking to get a commitment. Yes or no. So if they say, yes, yeah, I'd get involved if it works for you, well, then you really probably haven't shared enough of your testimonials from people on your team, your upline, your leadership, because those are real, you know, real testimonials. And now today, the social proof is there. Back in the day when I was doing it belly for belly in the 90s, you know, it, I would tell a story, but today... And it was hard to prove it, you know, without unless I got somebody on the phone, but they could tell a story. Now it's kind of hard to fabricate someone posting their success on Facebook. You know, one of your uplines, somebody in the company who's been around the company for a while and they're living a lifestyle and every they got this big, huge following. They got 5,000 friends. I mean, it's kind of hard to fabricate that. So that's social proof. I would, and then you could turn them back around and say, why would you want to sit back and wait when this thing is? This train is moving. Another way to handle the, that objection is I'm going to see if it works for you is to say, look, I'm going after my top 10 people. You're on this top 10. I'm going to get so busy working with those that get involved that I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to work with you. You may have to find someone else to work with because our compensation plan says you only need X amount, you know, whatever amount of legs or if you're in a binary two. And so there's a way of using the takeaway there to be strong in your posture to say, why in the world would you wait to see if I'm going to be successful? Why wouldn't you want to be part of a team and work together and we both can become successful? You see, that mindset doesn't make sense to me. So that's the two ways that I would handle that particular objective. Oh, wow. Awesome. Great. Anything you want to follow up on that? Well, another thing, well, for them to wait, to say I want to wait and see what you do, is just actually showing that wh where's their leadership mindset is that? Like, I'm not going to somebody show me an opportunity. I'm looking at the opportunity, not what that person's going to do. 
because they may drop out. They may leave. They may. That's like, you know, I'm not going to wait on their success because I'm looking for my success. If I get in with someone, actually, I'm I may do better than them. I may hit ranks before them. So for me to sit back and say, I'm um, waiting to see what you're doing. That just doesn't make sense to me at all. Period. Nope. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, guys, there's been a lot of value on this blab right here. And, um, now we're going to go ahead and get ready to close it out. But what I want to do, any final thoughts from our, our panelists here that you want to give our audience before we close it on out. And, um, you know, Ed, we'll start with you. I mean, you're giving them value all night. Any final thoughts? Yeah, whatever company you're with, the challenge is be here in a year from now. Do not give up. Be here in a year from now and watch what happens. Work harder on yourself than you do on your business just to get started. Or even if you've been in the industry for a while and your business is a little flat, go back and get fired up. Spend more time on yourself and the fundamentals. You see, I look at network marketing like actors and actresses. Each one of us is either an actor or an actress. You have to role play. You ha in the, ba the basic fundamentals, don't worry about your comp plan. Don't worry about your product line. Worry about building relationships. And if you have a hard time creating relationships, then role play with what to say and how to say it with people on your team. Spend more time behind the scenes, and ultimately, you'll end up, when it's showtime and you're in front of a prospect and you're ready to build a relationship, it's just like an actor or actress on stage. It's showtime, and you'll shine. Do that consistently over the course of the year and be here a year from now and watch what happens. Awesome. And um, Ed, tell them one more time, outside of Twitter and Blab, Blab how can they follow you and get more education in this industry? My website is edzimbardi.com. I'll put it here in the chat, edzimbardi.com. I have a blog there. And uh, more than happy to help anyone. Just reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help. Awesome. Greg, final thoughts, my friend? Um, now, my final thought is this. Set your goals, make a plan, and then execute. And stay focused. And don't let anyone tell you that you cannot accomplish what your goal is or your dream is because there will be people that will tell you that it's not going to work so you have to put in yourself to stay steady stay focused and like i said make the challenge of being here next year and and showing people show and, and just accomplish your goals prove it to yourself and that's my final thought awesome and uh, for me Piggyback off what my fellow panelists said, make a commitment, 18 month commitment, guys, that you're going to stick with it. Find you some great mentors like Mr. Ed, myself, Greg, that can teach you guys how to stay consistent and expand your network, guys. So find you some great mentors and stick around for the long haul because this industry has made a lot of people very successful and you can be the next top success story. So, hey, we enjoyed this blab tonight. Ed, I'm glad I found you on here. I'm definitely following you, and I will be going to your website, sir. Same, same here, guys. I'm, I, I followed you back. I'm going to stay on uh, Blab. I'm going to start a new one here. So anybody wants to go and look for me, at Ed Zimbardi, jump on in the Blab, and we'll keep chatting. Thanks, right. guys. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.